<laughs> so many I tell people I tell my own kids, you know, try a lot of things and figure out yeah. number one, figure out what you're good at, but more importantly, figure out what you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you like something, you can be good at it. Yeah, for the most part. So well, yeah, enjoy I was, it. Yeah, I was always interested in science and medicine. Um, you know, and I I didn't I, I'm blessed. I didn't have to study a lot. I, I I could recall things. I could read something. I could write something. And I could just recall it. Mm-hmm. So I did well in school, graduated the top of my class with very little studying, very little effort. Mm-hmm. And then I went to University of Texas and got a degree in biochemistry. And then with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, I quickly realized there's not a lot of demand for jobs with a degree in biochemistry. Now, when you, went, degree. when you went to U- University of Texas, did you still have that ability where it was just very easy, it clicked with you? With school, you didn't really have to study much? No, that was a game changer for me because there for the first time, I mean, the biochemistry program at the University of Texas was probably one of the most challenging and difficult degree programs there were. And so I had to study. Mm -hmm. The problem was I had to work. You know, I was working 30, 40 hours a week and taking 15, 16 hours of college courses. Wow. uh, Because I had to fund my own education. What did you do for work? I waited tables and bus tables and cooked at Outback Steakhouse. There you go. (laughs) Whatever it took, right? (laughs) So it it, it provided me the discipline because I didn't have a lot of free time, and so I had to maximize the time I had. But for the first time in my life, I had to actually study and learn physical chemistry, biochemistry, physics, calculus, differential Mm. equations. You know, this was a new science to me. So it, it, it provided me the discipline to multitask. And to take on a lot of stress, take on a lot of things, but focus on the academics. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the, the first job I got out of college was as an analytical chemist at Phenol and Chemical in Deer Park, okay. Texas. And it was, I spent probably a year there, and it was the most mundane, monotonous job I've ever had in my life. And it was, I mean, I went in every day, did the same thing, quality control on mm. uh, plastics, on uh, refined products from you know the, the the crude oil that comes out of the yeah. ground to mm-hmm. different stages of of the refining process to the end product of gasoline, kerosene, and different grades of gas. Yeah. So it was analytical quality control, and it was absolutely awful. You weren't allowed to think; you just go in, do the same thing every day. So were you testing and stuff. To... Yeah, no okay. testing. Okay. Doing kind of analytical chemistry. So then um, I realized, in order for me to do what I wanted to do, I needed to go mm-hmm. and further my education. So I enrolled at LSU School of Medicine in. Uh, PhD program in molecular and cellular physiology and this was at the time that the Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery of nitric oxide and one of my mentors in that program was a pharmacologist who'd been involved in nitric oxide for since the 80s Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Felish and he introduced me to the science of nitric oxide I met with Lou Ignaro one of the guys who just won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of nitric oxide Mm -hmm. and there was a lot of excitement around this but yeah it was a gas that's naturally produced. There weren't any methods or techniques to develop to analyze and really detect nitric oxide that's produced in biological systems. So really my entire PhD work was on developing sensitive and selective methods to detect nitric oxide gas. 